a detailed look at diverter valves and hydroblocks in a gas boiler. My name is Alan Hart and in today's video I've got a really special series of videos for you today. First of all we're going to start off with the Vaxi 105 and, and the equivalent um, hydroblock and the diverter cartridge. Roy from Viva Training Academy, Roy's been a trainer for over, well for, for a long long time he's trained me on many training sessions and Roy's going to go through this full um, hydro block with us. He's also going to show you the how the components work inside it and then in future videos we're also going to go to the plastic, uh, I call it plastic, my favourite favourite one, Baxi GA and all that type of stuff, but we're going to go through the hydro block on them as well, show you how they work and yeah, so if you've got any questions, please ask them below in this video and then hopefully in future videos we can incorporate the questions that you ask for these components. Let's go over, let's go over and see Roy. This video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision. Please comply with the current regulations at the time. Hi guys, it's Roy Fugler here at Viva Training Academy over in Halifax again. And today we're going to look at an old favourite of mine, the Hydro Block out of the Baxi 80 Eco, 80E, 105E, 105HE, the Potterton Performer 24, 28, 28HE, the main 24 Eco, the 24 and the 28. Uh, we're going to go through some of the basic stuff, we're going to show you what can go wrong, how to find out what's going wrong. A lot of these components can be refurbished, so we're going to show you how to replace parts on them. So, without further ado, let's start off. A um, couple of basic things really. Some of the boilers will have a filling loop fitted across those two nuts, that's fine. That's across the return and the cold inlet. But underneath there, there are a couple of filters. A lot of times guys forget about the filters on the return and I've had engineers ringing me up in the past and they've asked me, I've changed the PCB, I've changed the pump and it's still not working and the first question I ask is, have you checked the filter? And then there's a deathly silence on the end of the phone and a uh. So without further ado, I'm going to show you where that filter is. So on the return, it's under the large nut. Now obviously this is a cutaway boiler, there's no water on there. On a live boiler we'd be uh, taking all the precautions, safe isolation, um, wearing PPE, all that type of stuff. But this is just a cutaway on the wall. So with my trusted wide mouth adjustable I'm just going to slatten it off. And yeah, I have pre-entered this because I don't want to see myself struggling like an idiot. So underneath there we've got a filter. Now obviously this jig has been used before so that filter showing a bit of signs of, uh, of dirt on there but that's a return filter so that's stopping any debris getting back into the pump and on the return so it's worth if you're going out to one with circulation issues removing that part and giving it a clean so i'll just pop that down to one side there's also a filter on the cold water inlet now obviously in the real world i'd have isolated these valves to make sure there's no water coming out so again we're going to just get the adjustable on there, crack that, and then under there we've got another gauze filter, slightly smaller, and as you can see from this one, because it is being fixed, it is showing some signs of blockage, so this would have been compromising the water flow through this one. So that's the filter on the cold water inlet. Now, in the past I've had people contact me saying, well I've had that filter out and I'm still struggling to get hot water, I've changed the diaphragm in there, I've had the impulse tubes out, which we're going to go through shortly. But the next thing that people don't sometimes know in there is this little filter and flow restrictor. So this is a cutaway one in there, so I've cut this away. So there's a little filter in there, there's a flow restrictor and a little spring. So there's one which I took out of a boiler a few years ago, so that's the component. And I have preempted this by just slackening it off a little bit. Because in the real world, you'll find that if that's been in the water, particularly hard water areas, you're going to struggle to get that in bits. To be fair, these are about 15 to 20 quid, so it's sometimes worth um, just taking it out and replacing it. What can happen is this little plastic spring-loaded valve in there, they can disintegrate and then little bits of plastic get up into these impulse tubes. 
and then start causing problems. Intermittent hot water is quite a common one when that's blocked off. Nine times out of ten, the hot water will work, the customer turns the tap on, the diaphragm operates, the little spring, the uh, micro switch operates, and they get hot water. The tenth time, it doesn't work. Try it again, it works, but then it gets worse and worse. So you get call outs, and you know what happens, guys, when we're stood in front of a boiler, it always works. So it's worth sometimes just replacing these, but I'm going to show you what's inside there. So I'm just unscrewing the little cap. So inside there, there's a little spring-loaded valve. That's like a little bypass valve. And then inside that bit, we've got the flow restrictor, which is just a simple colour-coded flow restrictor. Two little pieces of plastic with an O-ring. The water pressure onto the central piece of plastic, the pink piece, pushes the O-ring against the green bit of plastic and it spreads it out and restricts the flow. So that's limited down. And on this one's case, this is a 12 litre. It's stamped onto the end of it. So it's worth replacing that. So the next thing we're going to look at is these impulse tubes. So they're on 10 millimetre nuts. So we're just going to slacken them off. So how it works is basically you've got cold water pressure coming up. So you've got high pressure goes under the diaphragm and then the top side is low pressure coming back down there. So when the customer turns the tap on, the hot water flows out and the pressure activates the diaphragm operating the micro switch. So obviously if the diaphragm starts to stretch, starts to become weak, that can affect how far it comes out. Just another little tip, if you're struggling with the hot water and you want to check whether it's mechanical or electrical, it's very, very simple, little pinky finger, just operate the micro switch. And if the boiler goes to fire, we know the electrical side's okay. It's more a mechanical issue. So we're just going to pop these impulse tubes out. They are quite fine tubes. They're a 10 mil nut. So it's just worth whipping these out. And again, in hard water areas, you will find that they tend to block up. I tend to use a little piece of wire. I just strip down a bit of three core, just take a couple of strands out and use it as a little cleaning brush. And you can also just blow down them to make sure that's, a, that's clear. So I'm gonna whip the other one out. So I say, it, they're just simple little copper impulse tubes. There's no washers in there, the compression type fittings, they've got a little olive in, an olive joint in there. So you don't need to worry about losing any washers and things like that. So that's the other impulse tube. And again, just a quick blow to check that it's clear. So we've popped that out. So the next thing we're going to look at is the pressure differential valve. So the diverter side, which is this unit here, it's comprised of two parts. There's the pressure differential, which as its name implies, works on that difference in pressure. So I'm going to show you that. Now that's held in by a couple of, couple of screws. And again, yeah, I know this isn't real life. This is on a jig on a wall in the, in the real world. You'll probably find that these, these two uh, bolts that are holding it in, they're not as accessible, but they have got little screw heads on, uh, flat bladed screw, and they've also hexagon heads. So you can sometimes get a little spanner or a little socket on there. So I'm just going to undo these, making sure it doesn't spring out and shoot across. So that's taken that out. So now you can see inside it. So you can see the impulse tube underneath. So that's allowing the water pressure to push up. So as that pushes up, what it's going to do is activate the micro switch. So that's moving up and down. So as that operates and that moves up and down. That diaphragm is a replaceable part. There are service kits. One of the quite common faults that we get on these, obviously is a little what's called a stuffing box washing. Cause years and years ago, before rubber O-rings came out, they used to be stuffed with hemp and paste. We now use little rubber O-rings, but it's like anything else. If that O-ring's been subjected to that spindle moving in and out, 20, 30 times a day, however many times the customer's using the hot water, that little stuffing box wears out. So you find that they drip down there, they'll leak. So as part of the service kit, you'll get a new um, stuffing box. So it comes complete with the brass section. It's very, very simple matter of stripping it out and cleaning it. And you can change that brass, uh, the complete unit, or you can refurbish it. Again, depends what sort of state it's in. So that's the pressure differential part of it. I'm just going to come over to this section over here. So we've got a drain point on there. A lot of the Baxi boilers on the, on the right hand side there is a drain point and, it's, and it can just be undone and it allows you to drain the heat inside of it. 
Something else which people don't always realise is there. That's the spigot that the pump sits onto, and it is a spigot. This particular one's got two O-rings on there, and you don't always know that there's two O-rings. And again, it's very simple for me to pull this out because it's a cutaway. So the rear O-ring sits into a groove. And obviously you don't see that when you remove the pump. So if it's leaking at the back of the pump, you might change that O-ring, change the other O-ring on the top of the pump, but you don't realize there's one at the back. You put it all back together and the damn thing drips and you're wondering what's causing it. I've had guys changing complete pumps because they think it's the manifold. Then they order up a new brass manifold. Lo and behold, the new brass manifold comes and it doesn't have the spigot in. So they're looking then and realize that they spent a lot of money on a piece of brass and it's all is is an O-ring. Just a little tip with these. If you're struggling to get them out, don't put grips on because you're gonna damage it. What I've found works is using my trusty adjustable spanner and just tightening it down onto the top and then just jiggling it about and trying to unscrew it that way. I found that that will allow it to come out. But again, these are quite cheap, probably 15, 20 quid. So it's sometimes worth just replacing that if it's, if it's really soiled. So that's just a little one with that. The PRDs are ending with a little grub screw. So if that's leaking, that's dripping because occasionally they do, obviously the age of these boilers, we're talking well into 15, 20 years old, some of these boilers. But as an engineer, I like to repair things if I can. So we can replace the PRDs. There's a little grub screw up there. So we just undo that. It can be a bit awkward to get in. I use a little Allen key um, with a ball end so I can come in at a slight angle. So that can be removed and we can replace the complete unit. It's not worth refurbishing these and this, you'd struggle to actually refurbish and get into that. So it's worth replacing that. Again, you're talking about 10, 15 quid for something like that. So the thermistor, that sits into the hot water outlet. Now that's a 13 mil spanner. Um, the common fault we used to get back in the day when I was out on patch, they used to drip. That's because they used a fibre washer. And obviously it's in a section there, that pipe when they're running the hot water gets hot and overnight everything cools down, it contracts, so expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. The problem is the poor old fibre washer can't cope with it. So a good few years ago it was replaced with a copper washer. So that's got the little copper washer on. What we're going to do at the end of the video, we're going to put some part numbers up for some of the things I'm talking about, just so that you've got them there if you need them. So that's a good old standard thermistor that Baxi have used for a good few years and other manufacturers. And that's the little copper washer. So that washer um, just seals it and makes life a little bit easier. It stops them dripping. I've seen them in the past. Guys have replaced it with a number fibre washer. That's fine. I've also seen guys put PTFE on there. The problem with using PTFE is if you're not careful and put PTFE on the end of it, what it's like doing, it's like trying to touch a radiator with a pair of gloves on and finding out how warm it is, you don't know. So it can affect the performance of the hot water because it's not sensing the temperature correctly. So that's the hot water thermistor. It's exactly the same as the heating thermistor on this particular boiler. The difference is that that is in a wet pocket, the heating is in a dry pocket. So we'll just pop that down to one side. So the next thing that we're going to remove is the, the diverter valve. Now to remove the diverter valve, there is a bypass across the back of it. So there are two clips on the bypass. So I'm just going to pop the two clips. So that one just pops out there. And the other one at this side, obviously again, it's in a jig, in a workshop. So it's easy for me to do it. In the real world, it would be a little bit more awkward. Then an 8mm spanner on the top of this other pressure differential. This is your pump proving switch, which I'll show you a little bit better when I get it all out. So that's a little 8mm spanner. So I'm just slapping that off. Again, there's no washer in there. There's a little olive in it. So it's like a compression joint. It's tightened itself back up as they sometimes do. So I'm just slapping that off. There we go. And then the bypass just slides out. It's on a couple of O-rings. And that's come out so again that little impulse tube can get blocked up so the symptom for that is the boiler the pumps running but the little pressure differential switch isn't always making so again like the hot water flow switch you can get your little pinky in lift it up 
and then if the boiler starts to go through its ignition sequence you know that perhaps that diaphragm needs changing or this needs to come out and give a bit of a clean so i'm just going to remove the, the whole diverter valve now so it's just a case of my three quarter inch nut i've just slightly it off so this should come out nice and easy there we go so that's that's the insides of the diverter there are service kits to replace all the parts in here there's also a service kit to replace this little diaphragm because again like the main pressure differential diaphragm they can stretch they can split so again what we have is the when the pump comes on it's creating pressure underneath that diaphragm that's lifting that up and it's making that little micro switch and again there's a stuffing box in there which can sometimes leak the other thing that's in here is a bypass valve that little spring loaded bypass so the idea is as the system starts getting up to temperature the rooms are warming up the thermostatic radiator valves are starting to close down the system might go from eight radiators to seven to six to five to four to three now obviously these boilers were way before we had energy related pumps which can modulate the, the, the pump speed down these pumps were all pumped no pump so it's running at full speed so that pump's creating a lot of energy it needs to go somewhere so that little bypass valve can open up and allow it to go around the bypass so again one of the things you can get in dirty systems bearing in mind the age of these boilers the vast majority won't have filters on so we all know what can happen on systems like that we get dirt going into there so basically we get some dirt on that so it doesn't shut fully off so the customers complaining is that the hot water is not warm enough and the heating is taking a long time to warm up because it's short circuiting it's basically going between the flow and return on the boiler so if you're getting that symptom it's well worth whipping this out and again you can take the nut off the back and take that little plastic valve out and it can be replaced so the micro switches can be replaced everything can be refurbished and things like that so the plate, plate heat exchanger it's held in with two bolts and that can come out and that can be replaced as well as you can see we've got rid of the whole valve now so that's uh, all about the hydraulic block that's part one we're going to do other videos on other hydro blocks and um, what else we're going to do is put a list of part numbers that are referred to the service kits and the thermistor o-ring at the end of the video just so you've got them so if you want to do any replacements so the next one we're going to do is part two and this is going to be on Alan's favourite hydro block, the thermoplastic hydro block. So thanks very much for watching this part one. I'd like to see you when we do part two. So from me at the Viva Training Academy over in Halifax, it's bye bye for now. Thank you once again for that, Roy, and thank you to Viva Training Academy, who's putting a lot of time and effort into helping, helping you guys, helping this channel and just helping to raise standards in the industry as well. Uh, one thing I've taken from this video today, I knew about the return filter in the return because that's a common problem. I've been to lots of jobs in the past where systems are sludged up and people haven't been able to repair the boilers and it's just been the return filter. So I knew about that one. The one I didn't know was there's also a filter in the cold in. I didn't know that one. So. Every day is a school day and we're always learning. So if you're new into the industry, don't be, don't be, um, don't be scared to ask questions because as I say, I've learned some on this video today and it's every day is a school day and it's all about learning. So yeah, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. We are going to do some future videos or some more videos. We're going to do the hydro block on the GA Ranger boilers, the plastic hydro block, my favorite boiler, Knott's. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.